on the hour news, the online rolling news, the high tech, high speed, in your face, can't escape the news. It wasn't always like this, you know. Come for a little stroll with me and I'll show you. <laughs> child's play. The Tudors were the masters of metaphor and satire. This was the word on the street. Take the news, couch it in the tuneful little ditty, pass it underground. That's how we got to hear the news. Oh Catherine of Aragon to Henry VIII, soon to be king. On the street, I had a little nut tree, nothing would it bear but a silver nutmeg and a golden pear. Oh yes, England was the political prize. The golden pear, agricultural plenty. <coughs> Fine bartering tools to get precious metals from South America. Spices from the East and royal pockets would be lined. The King of Spain's daughter came to visit me, and all for the sake of my little nut tree. The deal was done, the two were wed. Did they live happily ever after? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> time passed, time passed, and several years, and one daughter later, Henry starts to rove. He wants a son and an heir and he has his pretty little mistress, Anne Boleyn, lined up for this purpose. But a royal heir must be born in wedlock. Solution. Now King Henry sent Cardinal Wolsey to Rome to ask the Pope for a divorce. Hey, have you heard? Old Mother Hubbard, Cardinal Wolsey, went to the cupboard, the Vatican, to get the poor dog, King Henry, a bone for divorce. But when he got there, the cupboard was bare. Pope said no. And so the poor dog, he had none. Tough, Henry. Cardinal Wolsey didn't come out too well from that one either. <laughs> well, a fair few royal tantrums later, King Henry did get his way. He cut allegiance with Rome. He built his own church, Church of England. He made itself his head. He arranged his own divorce. And then he set about the dissolution of the monasteries and all things Catholic. Psst, psst, busy, busy gander, where shall I wander? Upstairs and downstairs and in my lady's chamber. You see little fluffy geese running along? No, this was panic monks and Catholic clergy looking in the great houses in anterooms and secret chambers to hide. There I met an old man who wouldn't say his prayers, so I took him by the left leg and threw him down the stairs. Not such a good hiding place. It got worse. It got much worse. <coughs> Still, Henry was happy. He married Anne Boleyn. Did they live happily ever after? Not quite. Oh, Anne, if you'd only listened to the word on the street, you would have heard them sing about you. Sing a song of sixpence, a pocket full of rye. J 
jump to the last line. The maid was in the garden, hanging out the clothes. When down came a blackbird and pecked off her nose. And you were that maid, and that blackbird was the omen of your doom. And doomed you were. Before he died in 1547, Henry had cheated himself through four more wives, one more daughter, and one short-lived, short-reigned son. By now, after he died, his daughter from that first marriage, Queen Mary, was now on the throne. She pressed reverse on her father's actions. She wanted to reverse the country, revert the country back to Catholicism. Same tactics, except now it was the Protestants that were being tortured. And it was carnage. Mary, Mary, quite contrary, how does your garden grow? With silver bells and cockle shells and pretty maids all in a row. Chelsea Flower Show? No way. <laughs> Mary, how are your cemeteries growing with all the Protestants you've killed? <laughs> oh, well, I've killed them with silver bells, thumb screws, and cockle shells. A neat little device for compressing a rather sensitive part of the male anatomy. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. And pretty maids all in a row. A euphemism for guillotine. Mm -hmm. So there you are. Same news, same bloom, different day, good news, bad news, fake news, put it in a ditty, send it underground news. You can never escape 